right, what I want to do first here is go through like a couple of those identities that especially that you had to do like on the back side of the test yesterday all right you're really going to use those in what we're fixing to do here now let's start off with uh, the the quotient identities okay and I, I left those off of the test I didn't ask you to do the quotient identities and that's probably the ones that I wanted to ask you about the most so anyway I just screwed up I didn't really put it on the test like I wanted to so what are we talking about here the quotient identities right right okay so we can write like tangent of theta as sine theta over cosine theta okay all right and then so if tangent is sine over cosine then cotangent is the reciprocal of that isn't it okay so it would be cosine over sine now let's look at some other things here and here's here's where we get with this um we have six trig functions right now out of the six um you have four of them that are not sine and cosine it's secant cosecant tangent cotangent and so what i want to do with the other four is i want to be able to take the other four and write them in terms of sine and cosine so every trig function can be written in terms of sine and cosine and that's going to help me do something with that okay so the other ones that i'm going to do i'm going to use all of them but let's look at some reciprocal identities okay so we just talked about how we can write tangent and cotangent in terms of sine and cosine all right how can i write cosecant and secant in terms of sine and cosine right the the reciprocals okay so cosecant is one over sine and secant is one over cosine okay so notice these four right here and so now with those four and with sine and cosine all six of them can be written in terms of sine and cosine now this is where we're getting to okay and this is sort of the title I need somebody to pass these out for me since I'm plugged in Jeremy would you pass these out for me? all right and what he's passing out there we're only gonna look at the first page today the other pages are for you know Friday Monday Tuesday um, but this is sort of our title here we're gonna and we're gonna do this for probably a week now we're gonna simplify trig expressions okay now notice when you get your paper there that most of these what what's the main operation here's some more yeah it's multiplication okay now when I'm multiplying things especially fractions how does that lead to a lot of simplifying instead of using the word simplifying what is it really when I do a lot of multiplying reducing okay or canceling right so you remember when we talked about canceling you know the only time I can cancel we cancel a numerator with the denominator when the operation is multiplication okay and so when we see a lot of multiplication we're going to use this strategy so you know write this at the top of your page because this is the strategy type okay when you see a lot of multiplication you change everything to sine and cosine okay so we just talked about how we can take the other four functions and write them in terms of sine and cosine and so when I see a bunch of multiplication like you have on your first worksheet right here that really lends the strategy really lends to that because you're gonna get a lot of stuff to cancel out okay now 
what I'm going to do with you here is I'm going to do most of the odd problems, and your assignment will be the even problems. Okay? Now, let's start off with the first one. Okay, number one. And so we're going to simplify this. So we have cosine x times tangent x times cosecant x. Okay, so we really don't know what that is, but if we rewrite tangent and cosecant in terms of sine and cosine, watch what will happen. Okay, so how can I write, how can I write tangent there? Yeah, sine over cosine. And then, how can I write cosecant? 1 over sine. Okay? Now, you remember why I was preaching to you last Friday about that you really, really need to know these identities? This is why. Okay? So, when you, when you look at tangent there, you're automatically thinking sine over cosine. And then when I look at cosecant, I automatically know it's 1 over sine. Um, They don't fit those, do they? Yeah, you can just do that. You don't need that one. Okay. All right. Now, y'all see what's going to happen? Uh, cosine cancels. Okay. And sine cancels. So it's just one. Now, do you see why we want to write everything in sine and cosine? All right. It simplifies out. Now, notice that works out because the operation is multiplication. Okay, so when we start adding and subtracting, that's not going to work out so well. But you know, it does lend itself when you're multiplying. Now, let's look at number three. Okay, let's see if you guys can figure this one out. All right, you got sine a times cotangent a. So what could I especially do there with cotangent? Cosine over sine. Okay, so now look what will happen. Sines cancel, yeah. So my answer is just cosine A. Right, well, let's talk about when, when can we cancel something, when... When the operation is multiplication, which it is, and one of them is a numerator and one of them is a denominator. So we, cancel, we can't cancel out a numerator with a numerator. All right. Now, let's look. Let's look at number five now. Okay, and then I'm going to start skipping a lot of, around here. All right. Let's see. This one's got tangent x times cosecant x. And now I'm bringing in division. Okay. So, you know, with division, we've got some canceling issues there. But remember this. Can we change division to multiplication, though? Right. So that's ultimately what's probably going to happen. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and change everything to sine and cosine. So tangent, we can write as sine x over cosine x. And then cosecant, we can write as 1 over sine x. And then secant, we can write as 1 over cosine. Okay, now, before we maybe use that strategy of multiplying by the reciprocal, let's, let's clean up the numerator a little bit. Y'all see something we can do in the numerator part? Yeah, signs will just cancel. So we'll get 1 over cosine x. Now, this one actually works out a lot better than I anticipated. But... Notice, that's the same thing over itself, isn't it? So it's just one. Now, let's talk about, because it's going to happen in number, what was it? I think it's number four, okay? There's not, that's not going to happen on number four. So what happens here if these two are not the same? Well, then I could just change it to multiplication. We could multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, so make you a note on number four. That's what's going to happen there. Okay, you're going to get, you're going to have a quotient. And once you change everything to sine and cosine, you're going to have to change it to multiplication of the reciprocal instead of the, like a division problem. All right, I'm going to skip over number seven. 
Okay, let me go to number nine. Okay, now on number nine, see, this is another reason why I gave you those questions on the test yesterday, so you would hopefully go ahead and learn it for these lessons. All right, on number nine, you have negative arguments. I don't like negative arguments, but we can get around them, can't we? Okay, what can we use to sort of change things up with these negatives right there and right there? Even and odd properties, okay, or even and odd identities, okay? So remember what, cosecant is odd. So cosecant of negative y would just be negative cosecant y. And then cosine is even, so this would just be cosine y. All right, so if we see those negative arguments here we can use those properties now let's go back to our old strategy here let's change everything to sine and cosine so let's see cosecant we can write as one over sine so i'm just going to leave the negative out in front like that okay yeah you could put it on the sine or you could put it on the one it doesn't matter all right times now cosine of y now notice here nothing really cancels does it okay so let's multiply what we have so one, negative 1 times cosine y would be negative cosine y. And then we'll just bring over sine y. Okay, now, is there a simpler form, though, that we can write that in? So remember, simplest, right, that's equal to cotangent. Simplest form means I want to write the least amount of stuff possible, right? And so what's, I have two things. I can write those two things as 1. So even though it's kind of going backwards because we want to change everything to cosine to sine, but in the end we want it as simple as possible. So cosine over sine, y'all said, was cotangent, but it's just going to have a negative in the front. Yeah, so neg negative cotangent y. Negative cody, if that's how you want to spell cody. All right, now let's see. Let me, that one's pretty easy. Let's look at some more odd ones. Let's look at number 13, okay? Let's do this. All right, you got tangent x times cosecant x. Okay, so how could I do tangent? Yeah, sine x over cosine x. And then cosecant is 1 over sine. Right, so that works out pretty good. Sine x will just cancel out. So we got 1 over cosine x. Now, is there a simpler form, though, to write that in? Secant. Okay. And that kind of bothers people. They kind of want to stop at this point right there. But let's think about it. What's a simpler form? A fraction or something that's not even a fraction? Okay. So that's certainly, secant x is certainly a simpler form. Now, Let's see. Let's look at some of these that have some squares in them. Look at number 15. All right, this one you got sine squared theta times cosecant theta. So pretty obvious by now here that we're going to change cosecant to 1 over sine. All right, but now let's talk about canceling this. Um, since this is squared, that's not going to totally cancel out, is it? It's just going to leave sine there, right? So it's kind of like this. This is like sine theta times sine theta, right? And so when I cancel it out with this one over here, it would just cancel one of them out. So this is the way. I don't show it that way. This is the way I show it. Does that make sense? Okay. You know, technically, that's not what happens. It's what's left. So now that just leaves you with sine theta. Okay. And go ahead and fix something for me. I think on number 16, I have to look at my key on this one. I think on 16, the one that you're going to do, that cosecant theta should be squared. Okay.
All right, let me look at 17, maybe 19, and then I'm going to let y'all do some. All right, 17, you got tangent squared theta times cosecant squared theta. So we can change tangent squared to sine squared over cosine squared. So tangent is sine over cosine. So if we just do tangent squared, then it's just sine squared over cosine squared. It's no big deal that you're squaring them right there. Now, yes. Yeah. All right, now what about cosecant squared? All right, 1 over sine squared. Okay, now you can see what's going to happen there. Now this time the sine squared just totally goes away, doesn't it? Because both of them are squared. So you're left with 1 over cosine squared, which is secant squared. Okay, I do these kind of fast. Are y'all keeping up with me okay? Okay, now let me, let me give you a I told you so moment. Okay, do you see why I wanted you to learn all those identities? Okay, so when you get to this, you're just whipping them out. Okay, and a lot of you missed your Pythagorean identities. Okay, the last, very last question. Those are going to come in play tomorrow. Okay, that's why I wanted you to go over those. We might go over those in a second if y'all want to. All right. Yes. Your periodic identities. So the sine of uh, x plus or minus 2 pi k is just sine x. Okay. okay. Now, you'll see those in a minute. All right, I'm going to skip over 19. It's pretty much the same thing as 17. Um, not exactly. I, I, don't, I can't tell you right off the top of my head. Now, um, all right, y'all take a few minutes here and work on that for me a little bit so I can get ready. All right, so your assignment is to do the even ones on there. I might go over number four with you if, if y'all tend to have some trouble there. 